almost ready to go with Weber Cup 18. This is what you've got to look forward to. It's going to be a cracking Friday night here in Barnsley, a team match to kick things off. Team Europe versus Team USA, then a series of singles matches, and then the dreaded, the feared captain's pick at the end, which we're all looking forward to, and that'll be a little bit later on tonight. Right, almost ready for our first match. They call it a baker in Tempin Bowling. So let's hand over to the first time today to our commentators, Cass Edwards and Nick Hawley. Yes, thanks very much indeed, Tony. Here we go again then. Europe, the reigning champions against the United States. And, uh, as you've heard, Guy Kaminsky and uh, Tony earlier just saying there's a real sense of determination about these Americans and there's a ruthlessness about the Americans as well. You come back from the Weber Cup as a defeated bowler, there is a very good chance you don't get selected again. And that's exactly what's happened here. Two new faces. A lot of young guys have come in, as you heard Sean Rash talking about that. They're all in their mid-twenties, these other young American pups. Marshall Kent here being one of them. The players just going through their warm-ups now, and uh, a lot of knowledgeable people around this lane in Barnsley, and there's uh, still tickets available if you do want to pop along for the weekend. Please uh, come and join us if you can. A lot of very knowledgeable people here, including my colleague Cass Edwards, are saying the Americans are overdue and this is going to be their year. Well, let's uh, sit on the fence just a little bit, Nick, but it's going to be very interesting. It's probably the strongest USA side that we've seen in a good few years. They've brought in EJ Tackett, reigning world champion, Tournament of Champions winner, and player of the year, and Sean Rash, the eldest one of the team at 35 years of age. The other three are all in their early 20s. Here is Sean Rash from Montgomery, Illinois. Definitely the veteran here. Very capable, very experienced as well. 12 career titles on the tour in the United States. But, uh, very striking uniforms. I hope these guys aren't fancying a night out in Barnsley while they're here because they better change if they want to go out. I think they've certainly won the fashion contests already. No, they've Be lost it, believe me, they've lost <laughs> it. Now here's a man who will be hoping not to be bowling like that for real, Martin Larson. They call him Lucky Larson, a man who in five previous attempts has never been on a losing side in the Weber Cup. Which is why he carries the nickname Lucky. He's certainly lucky for Team Europe. Five straight wins he's had with the European side, and as you say, Nick, looking for number six this year. Very quiet, very composed, very authoritative. Now, here's another one of these new Americans that we're looking forward to seeing. E.J. Tackett from Huntington, Indiana. And as you said earlier, Cass, boy, is this the man in form right now. All these bowlers, by the way, they're used to playing on TV. They'll understand all this, they get this. What these Americans are not necessarily used to is this format where you've got an effectively an arena, all the fans sitting along the side of the lane. They'll play on a more conventional bowling centre format as we look at Jesper Svensson, the two-handed bowler. Primarily bowls with his left hand, but he'll bring the second hand into play as well, as will Kyle Troop, the uh, very distinctive American coming in now. Sometimes that can unsettle, we've seen this in the past. Players that bowl on this sort of lane for the first time, with fans all down the side of the lane, it does distract and unsettle players occasionally. Yes, you're quite right, Nick, but these guys are so experienced, they're the, they're the top professionals in the world, and I'm sure they won't let the... the the fact that the audience is quite close to them really put them off. Well, they definitely won it, the Americans. And they've had to wait a long time for it. Dominic Barrett here, the Colchester man, will be hoping to make them wait a little bit longer. He's had a very successful Weber Cup career as Dom. More wins than losses, but he knows both sides of that particular coin. There's a new face for us. That is our referee here, Paul Lamanque.
from Portsmouth. Just issuing his final instructions, having a chat with Paul earlier today. Cass and I were very impressed that he just said, like all referees, I don't want to be seen, I don't want to be heard, leave it to the players. Yeah, Paul is actually a uh, former English Team England uh, international bowler himself, so he's uh, suited to sit in the referee's position. Let me just have a quick word about the lane that they are going to be bowling on and the oiling pattern that's been placed down before them. The oil goes down 44 feet on this 60-foot lane, so it only leaves 16 feet of dry back end where the ball will hook up. It's called a heavy oil condition because uh, there's a three-to-one ratio of the oil. The middle lane, middle part of the lane has got the heavy oil in it and it tapers off to the right-hand side, but it's on a ratio of three-to-one. And first up is the uh, man from Sweden. And he gets Europe off to the perfect start in this year's Weber Cup. Yes, for Svensson with the first strike. Yeah, great looking shot from the left handed two hander. Sometime bowl is called the shovel shot. Light in the pocket, but rips the rack and sets up those 10 pins, which scores 30 under the world of bowling scoring system. Now, Kyle Troop here from North Carolina will be looking to emulate that and just look at the rotation he got with that ball. I mean, that was in no doubt from the moment it left the fingertips. Yeah, that's the both the two-handers, a left-hander and a right-hander. Here you see Carl throwing pretty straight down the line, and some say that straighter is greater. Hits the one-three pocket, sets up that immediate chain reaction, and carries all ten. So here's Don Barrett. He too finds the pocket. He too with a perfect strike. Well, that's three out of three that have left absolutely no doubt at all. We are expecting higher scores here, and if these players carry on in this kind of vein, we are in for potentially a record-breaking Weber Cup here because they're all dialed in very early. They certainly are, Nick, yes. And with this scoring system, there will be higher scores. I mean, one or two of the players last year averaged 250. So if you're going to hit a 220 or 230 game, you may well be beaten this year. That's Tackett adding to the strike fest. Sean Rash, the skipper, looked pretty happy about that. Wasn't quite sure how Tackett was going to attack it, but he certainly did. And a late temp in there gives him 30 points. I hope that's the last time you're going to use that this weekend, by the way. I do apologise for that. I took <laughs> it from a colleague who uh, commentates in the United States, and I thought it was good, and I will not mention it yet again. There's some things we just can't do here. Here's Stu Williams. With the pressure on, he's got a bit wide. Yeah. Oh, didn't like the look of that when it just bit on the lane coming out of that oil pack that you were talking about, Cass. It had to do an awful lot of work. Certainly missed his mark on the right-hand side. Got snagged up in the oil. The, the ball came back and touched the headwind, but it's left him the two and the temp in split, which he needs to make. Oh, and yes. does. So, how about that for the starter? Yeah, but he's not celebrating. He's annoyed with himself for the first ball. But nevertheless, an open frame. The way this Baker's been going at the moment could probably have cost... Europe this first Baker, so this was a very important spare to make. Well, it certainly was. It's got 18 pins scored because he got 10 for the spare and 8 for the count on the first ball. Oh, absolutely nothing wrong with that. Well, the Americans have been uh, practising very hard on this lane all afternoon. I think you and I got here about three o'clock, Cass, and uh, the first thing you hear when you get here is the sound of pins going, and it was the Americans out there working. Yeah, certainly been having plenty of practice. Already there's a uh, 12 pin lead for the USA because of that single spare that uh, Stu Williams had. So lucky lucky last. Yeah, he's left. The what? seven in the corner. <laughs> I was going to say he's lucky because he had a five-seven split standing there for just a moment. Fortunate that the uh, five pin has gone, which should leave him just a single spare. See the ball's hurried on. It's only hit that head pin light. It's only just made it through that pin deck to hit the five pin. And that could well have been an open frame, but um, hard and straight here, and he'll make the spare. 
and score 19 pins. Yeah, but spare's not good enough. That's two now for Europe. The Americans perfect thus far. So this Baker slipping away from the holders. It's up to the Americans to keep their foot down here. The Chicago man, he's on fire. Yeah, 2016 Player of the Year is uh, Marshall Kent. Actually ranked number one, believe it or not, on the World Bowling Tour. Four PBA titles, and that is just a great-looking shot, and it keeps Team USA absolutely perfect. Yeah, and the pressure continues to grow on the Europeans. As the only man that's working the left side of the lane, so he gets that oil pattern all to himself. And he too has left the seven, and I think that is probably it for the frame, uh, for the for the point here. It's a marathon tournament, Nick, made up of lots and lots of little sprints, which are the single game. So there's a long way to go, but it's always nice to get the first point, which would be the Baker on the board. And unfortunately, yes, we're there, could not get. Uh, Pin to bounce across, taking that seven pin out. Well, he should do that. Oh, no. Oh, he's only just hung on there. I thought that was going to drift off into the gutter. No, he's got away with that, but it's another spare that really just opens up a huge gulf between the two teams now. And the way the Americans are bowling, each guy that's stepping up is knowing that everybody else has just been striking. They're not going to want to be the guy that misses out. Carl Troop looking for another striker, makes it. That's two shots out of two. The man known as Fro because of his haircut. Just loves bowling here. So I think we can put this one in the record books. What a different start this is. Remember, a year ago, it was the Europeans winning this opening session 6-1. Well, and there's another 10 that's just sitting there. There was a pin kind of rolling over in that general direction. Yeah, unfortunately, the 10 pin stood up, so that's four spares in a row for Team Europe. And as you say, Nick, this is pretty much done and dusted by the sixth frame. Unless the wheel comes off for Team USA, but at the moment they're perfect. Yeah, that looks pretty unlikely. I mean, we're talking about a 45 pin lead here. Well, it's just the way it goes on this, um, what they call complete frame, world bowling scoring system. And if you look closely, you can see on some of these bowling guys' bowling balls the amount of oil that's already being picked up as the ball goes down the lane. Now you can see EJ Tackett's bowling ball with a great thick rim of oil around it. It's certainly not stopping the strikes. This is a well-oiled American machine right now. <laughs> They're certainly loving this 44 feet of oil lane, lane pattern. And they're all aiming at that d down lane marker, which is at about about 40 feet on the 10th board. Uh, Stewart, who's, who got the spare fest started for the Europeans. Uh, he's had plenty of company since then, of course, but he gets a strike. He's yes. the man that's had the furthest journey. He's based uh, in Glendale, Arizona, just outside Phoenix these days, Stuart. Yes, um, originally from Ellesmere Port near Manchester, but uh, now he's married an American girl and living in just outside Phoenix. Yeah, just uh, a little bit wide and uh, the 300 Baker game has gone. Yeah, I was thinking for a minute there we may well have one. Yeah. Early doors. By the way, they were bowling. And it's the captain that's missed out first. <laughs> oh, he'll, he'll hear about it from the, uh, the youngsters. Honestly. I feel like Donald Duck and his nephews, this group, at the moment. Uh, yep, 34 pins is the difference. And there's only three frames to go. 
Well, I, th I guess a strike here for the Europeans, and it has to be a strike and nothing else. If the Americans do get a spare, or oh, heaven forbid, an open frame, that's going to change things quickly. So Larson has certainly been around long enough to know that things can change in a hurry, but he's got to have a strike. That'll do it. This puts a little bit of pressure now on the Americans for the first time. Yeah, four pins uh, difference, but the Americans do have one frame to bowl to catch up. But you're quite right, Nick. It's an open frame, which will score you eight, nine pins only against a strike, which will score 30. Games can turn around rather, rather quickly. Very quickly. And here is a man who doesn't want to be on the receiving end of that, and he just... something happened off to his left there. We do have a big crowd, but I didn't see or hear anybody noticeably doing anything. It's a very respectful crowd as well. We don't have any uh, attempts to put players off, but something bothered him there. It's normally a mobile phone or something, but I wasn't quite sure whether it was or it wasn't. Oh well, let's just see if that puts him off his stride. Strike on his first ball. No, no problem at all. Strike on his second ball, another 30 pins. Well, that's what you do when you've been distracted. You just settle yourself down and don't bowl till you're ready. Marshall Kent made sure he was ready. Well, what these guys are showing is exactly what the top professionals need with bowling and achieve its accuracy and repeatability. Once they've got that line to the pocket and they're, and they're settled on their A game, they can certainly strike for long periods of time and rack up the scores. Well, the lefty does his bit. Yeah, great looking camera angle shot there from uh, Jesper Svensson's ball. Playing out on the left hand side of the lane on his own. He's the only left hander in the tournament. Just a little bit late on that seven pin, but it has gone. Carl Troop, two shots, two strikes. Can he sew the game up here with another one? Three yes, for three. Can. Look at that. <laughs> Again, just look at the revolutions on that ball. Combined with the power as well. Well, he gets from that two handed delivery and release. And that is that. No questions about it. Clean as a whistle, wasn't it? Well, Barrett finishes off with a strike. What is this? One pin left standing for the Americans out of. Uh, in fact, no, they didn't even leave that. They got that on as a spare. It's just the one spare they've had in this game. Uh, just the one spare in this game. It was a 10 pin left by the captain. Yeah, that was it. And you can see the Europeans have scored 255. And they're well and truly trounced. Yeah, thrashed. You don't normally lose games on 255, but uh, this opening Baker game. And now the crowd's getting involved because they know America have won. And this crowd has been treated to a real power play from these Americans here. That really was impressive. 289. There was only one pin left after of the first ball of every frame. That was dispatched as well. That's as near perfect as it gets. 255, not shabby from the Europeans, but they know they're in a battle now already. It's a race to 19. This is an early skirmish, but it's gone well for the Americans. They've drawn first blood here.